Yes, I still have a fidget spinner. What's going on, guys? My name is Chris Howe, and this week we're going to be talking about finding your niche and how you can be making money quicker with videography and photography. Also, it just started snowing here in Canada. Do I look like somebody who's designed for winter? I mean, look at my hair. No, I should be on a surfboard. Anyways, guys, let's get into it. Now you're probably wondering to yourself, what does finding your niche mean? Well, I think I can kind of sum it up in a bit of my origin story and how I ended up falling into photography and videography and how I started making money with it. So let's go back six to eight years, something like that. I think that's the timeline. I used to work for the town of Newmarket, which is a government agency just north of the city of Toronto as a lifeguard. Now I worked there for two years. I did my lifeguarding things, which was just this. I was really good at just looking back and forth. Now, move along two years. My boss knew that I was going to school for radio and television and that I was going into video production. And she said, hey, Chris, would you like to make a video promoting the aquatics department here at the town of Newmarket, this government agency that I worked for? And of course I said, yes. So we went in one day, I brought my camera, I shot this whole thing about lifeguards and how cool they were. I think Arnold Schwarzenegger made a cameo in it or something like that, or I was dressed as Arnold Schwarzenegger. I can't remember what it was. Anyways, whatever it ends up being, we made this video and the town of Newmarket ended up loving it. And the communications team came up to me and they said, hey, Chris, would you like to get paid the same as a lifeguard, but just make videos for the town of Newmarket. And I said, yes, that sounds amazing. So I went right into working with the communications team. And I think I was like 17 or 18 at the time. And I was really excited about this opportunity. I didn't really know what was gonna happen, but I knew I just liked making videos. So I just went right into it for nine months, making videos for the town of Newmarket. And I put the same excitement and knowledge as I would into any other project for a corporate or commercial client. I really wasn't getting that many of these ones, but I kind of put as much energy and effort into it just because I really enjoyed it. So a couple months in, I made this one video. It was called Glow. And this video did really, really well online. It got something like 10,000 hits for a government agency, which is like a million hits for like any other company out there. It was kind of a big deal. I'm like eating my hair. One of the disadvantages of having long hair is that you eat your hair on a regular basis. So we made this viral government video and all of a sudden I started getting calls from like other government agencies. It was like the city of Burlington and the city of Hamilton. Shout out to anyone from Ontario who knows what I'm talking about. I started getting calls from all these other government agencies that wanted me to make videos for them. So by chance, cause I was just kind of working on contract for the town of Newmarket, I started a company because I had business coming in to make other government videos and all of a sudden, I became the government video guy here in Canada, which for a lot of people would be like, oh, he makes government videos. It's similar to when people are like, oh, they do wedding videos all the time. And there's literally nothing wrong with that. I found a niche where I noticed that people really weren't putting as much time into making good government videos. So I went in there and started making good government videos. And very quickly, literally within a few months, I started getting calls from all these other places that wanted me to start making videos for them. So for the first Four years of my career, I made government videos. Now I did a few other projects, but that was like the baseline of my income. And eventually by the time I graduated university, yes, I did go to school for radio and television arts and I did go to school for video production. Highly recommend it if you guys want an awesome network. I might go into that into another video, but yes, I went to school for it. And by the time I graduated university, I had enough business to create a company so that I could just work on videos full time. And the baseline of that production company that I started was all government videos. So this was my bread and butter. This gave me the opportunity to be like, I can make a living from my art, from my skill set as a video producer and photographer. And the reason why it grew so quickly is because no one else was really doing that area well. So what I'm trying to kind of sum up in that story is that find a place where people are not really producing high quality content and you should go in there and start producing 10% more, 20%, 100% more so you can start blowing the norm in that industry so that you can start getting a lot of business. Another example of this and a quick story is my friend Lucy. She's actually a fashion photographer for wholesale fashion and clothing lines. Her goal is to take photos that end up in a catalog where all these other stores are buying wholesale clothing from these companies. So really a lot of the photos that she makes, no one ever really sees, but they serve a very big purpose and she's one of the few people that does it really well. So all of a sudden she became very quickly in demand. So what I'm trying to say is go find a niche where other people aren't doing it as well and you go in there and kill it. Kind of going into this note too is I don't ever want you to be ashamed 
of the work and working in this space. I'm very proud of the government clients that I have. They pay fairly. They're never going to ever go away. Like the town of Newmark is never going to disappear. It's if anything, it's going to continue to grow. That's what's great about the government space. And I would really, really recommend that you try to find an industry where that company is not going to disappear. And I have a lot of friends who go into startups and they're like, I want to make a video for this company because they're going to offer me a few thousand bucks to make a video. But that company doesn't survive past a year. So really I would be very conscious of the clients that you take on. And you know, that's why we love government clients so much. That's why our company still works. I would say 50% of the business that I still produce, you don't really see a lot of it is government work. I love my government clients. I love working with them. They're great people. They're super nice. They're never going away and the paychecks are always on time. So these are very important things to keep in mind when finding your niche. So a quick reminder is go out there, see what industries are not producing good quality content and start Start producing awesome content in that space and that way you guys can start growing very quickly create a baseline income so that you can make a living off of photography or videography and then you can start exploring the clients that excite you or anything else that you kind of want to start getting into so I think those stages are very very important to consider so guys if you like this video please press like it's somewhere down here it's in one of those corners on this YouTube screen. It actually makes a difference. Subscribe, it would mean the world to me, and we'll catch you next week. Peace out, everyone.